Hello everyone, DM Johnny here from Dungeons and & Dice, and today we're going to go over 10 more common items that are not going to break your game. Get it on. For our first item, well it's not really an item, it's a tattoo. It's the Masquerade tattoo. There's a few of these common tattoos that aren't so bad. This one's similar to the Masquerade charm actually, and what it does first and foremost is it allows you to use Disguise Self on yourself once per day. That's not really a big deal, I think it only lasts an hour. And then it recharges at the next dawn or whatever. But why I like this one specifically, I don't actually have tattoos. In fact, I'm kind of pale down here anyways. But you can actually like manipulate what the ink does. And you know, I like role play stuff. That's really cool for a tattoo. It's just like a little bonus that's added onto it. And you can also disguise self, which is super useful out of combat and sometimes even in combat. Number two comes from the Call of the Nether, which I think is I think is official I'm not entirely sure but this item is really cool it's the uh, metal of meat pie and I think this is just like a one and done typically I give it two or three charges and what it does is it's basically a potion except it's temp HP a normal healing potion uh, light healing but minor healing potion that's the one it's 2d4 plus 2 temp hp once you basically grab the meat pie and eat it not eat it it's a metal once you put it to your mouth it acts like you eat it and then you get the temp hp i again i believe as written it's like one and done i would give it three charges um and if it's like beyond level five it could just recharge daily it's not even that bad well they're gonna get 10 temp hp at level five you're dropping that no problem Number three is going to be our first homebrew item. And hey, you know, if you like homebrew items, phew, go check out our Patreon. We got a bunch for just $1 a month. Weapons, uh, armor, shields, rings, miscellaneous items like this one right here. This one called the Chalice of Whispers. Your DM will love it. Uh, when the wielder drinks from this chalice and speaks a question or a request, they hear a whispered response from an otherworldly source providing cryptic hints or answers. Now I put it to like 15 words max for both the question and the response, and then uh, only once per day. Or honestly, you might even want to just put like three charges and done on this one. It's a cool item, but it is a lot more work for the DM. Of course, you can also troll your players with it if you're like in Curse of Strahd. So there's, there's definitely some cool stuff for it. All right, for number four, we're going back to the original. This one just takes a long time to get going, and this is the Pot of Awakening. Uh, so what you do with this is I think it actually comes with a seed. Maybe you have to put a seed in it. And basically if you water it every day, and I think as long as it's in the sun, uh, no, it doesn't even say that you need, okay, well I would require that you need to water it every day. And then after 30 days, this pot becomes an awakened shrub that you basically command. And these things are extremely weak. I think they're CR zero and vulnerable to fire. And as far as weakest creatures are concerned, the sun just blasting right there. I think the Awakened Shrub is like the like the weakest CR zero. I've actually been looking like what's the weakest creatures? That's in the front runner right there. So it's not even that bad and you have to wait 30 days for it to spawn. It's just a cool little role play item. Number five is another homebrew item and this is called the Helm of the Guardian. This is uh, basically once per long rest, you kind of get to do what is almost like a shield reaction is if someone's within five feet of you, you can touch them and give it to them as well. If not, you have to do it to yourself. But what you do once per day is you will give yourself advantage against some sort of magical saving throw. So fireball, charm, you know, something magical uh, in effect. You can give yourself advantage once per day or to an ally if they're within five feet of you and then it recharges every dawn. That's it. Number six is gonna be for our casters, and this is an imbued focus. I've actually started experimenting with these, and they're not terrible. So what the imbued focus is, uh, mind you, you should keep it to like the base elements. Don't get crazy with this. Uh, what this does basically, if it's a fire imbued rod, right, imbued focus, when you use firebolt, for instance, you automatically get plus one to that damage, which isn't a ton, but if it's for fireball, it's also just plus one, because I believe as it's written, yes, you gain a plus one damage roll to one of the die you roll. That's it, it's super weak, it's just a tiny little buff. Again, I would just put this on like fire, ice, lightning, something like that. I guess maybe necrotic for like Toll of the Dead, but I wouldn't do it for something like Radiant, because I think Radiant's already too strong. But up to you, just a little plus one damage for your caster, who's probably using a lot of cantrips at this level anyways. All right, number seven, this is my bard instrument. It's actually my last bard instrument because I've gone through them all at this point. This one is the instrument of scribing. I like this one because uh, if you are a bard, it only has three charges and it's supposed to be attunement. I would just make it so you can do it like once per day and it restores at dawn. I think, again, these, these attunement things, some of them aren't really all that great. All you get to do is basically leave a message on a wall 
But while you are playing it, you can use an action to expend one charge from the instrument and write a magical message on a non-magical object or surface that you can see within 30 feet of you. That's it. If you're a bard, uh, it's up to, well, shoot, what's six plus seven? 13 words, and if you're not, then it's only six words. It's literally just something that you can do to add to your performance check. That's the only reason I even put it in there. Similar to the illusion one, don't make it have attunement. Just let your bard have a little bit. What are they gonna do with this thing? It's maybe earn a little bit more gold. It's not a big deal. You see the sun just blasting me right now? It's like, uh, just come on through, guy, why not? Number eight is a very, very, very simple one. It's a boomerang hand axe. Yes, that's right. I recently played a blood hunter and my two uh, ranged weapons were axes and there were a couple of enemies up on the wall and I threw it up there. I threw both my axes up there and I realized I didn't have a ranged weapon. So uh, I, this is exactly what it sounds like. You throw it, hit or miss, it comes back. Maybe on a nat one, you like roll a d4 and if you get a four, it comes back. If not, it just goes out of control because boomerangs are not easy to control but it's just really simple you can give it a plus one if you want i just like the idea of throwing it and it like, and wow what's up like that and you just catch it back number nine gonna give a bow i don't really do a ton we don't actually do a ton of bows but this one's super simple it's called the bow of true aim and basically you have two options once per day recharges at dawn you can take the shot and then you can say nope i didn't hit so i'm going to use the bow's magical ability to re-roll my shot, take that shot. Alternatively, I like this method a little bit better just because I don't, uh, a lot of, it's a lot harder to get flanking or advantage when you are at range. So you can also use your charge to give yourself advantage once per day. So basically like giving yourself true strike. It is, uh, I think it's only for one attack though. It is only one attack, so you wouldn't get it on the whole thing unless the DM was feeling generous. But either way, it's just an extra bow. You can re-roll an attack or gain advantage, your choice, once per day. And for number 10, we have got the Cuddly Strixhaven mascot. I have not actually played this one, but I've pulled a couple items out of there. Uh, it is basically something that you can like clip on and it'll just kind of stay there for an hour or longer and you take an action to take it off. What I really like about it, as long as it's on you and it does, it's the way it's worded, you don't get advantage against being frightened or feared. But if you are frightened or feared, when you make a save to get out of that, the Cuddly Strixhaven thing, will help you out. And this one specifically says, you need to make the call before you make your roll, which I like, because that's how it should be. But, and even if it doesn't work, it's once per day, and it's just a little cuddly toy. It's like an inanimate uh, pet, I guess. I'm not entirely sure. Players like these kind of things though. Okay, there you go. There are 10 more common items that are not gonna break your game. I mean, there's nothing in here too crazy. And then I, well, I, I say that a lot, and then I give my players certain items and, they think of things I didn't think of, and it's just like, well, I'm gonna have to adjust that item. But either way, uh, hand a few out, let me know how it goes for you. And yeah, if you like magical items, please go do check out the Patreon. We have tons of items there. We've got uh, the Wheel of, I almost said the Wheel of Fortune. The Wheel of Fate is coming soon, which is 20 mundane magical items that you can roll for. Uh, we have just done non-combat pets and feats, and of course, a ton of magical items. Uh, $1 a month, go check it out. Uh, and yes, thank you to my subscribers already, my Patreons. I like you guys as well. You're pretty awesome. The fish are probably eating you right now. I got some more worms, so hopefully we could convince them to eat the worms. And if you liked what you saw and got what you needed, like, comment, subscribe. See you guys in the next video. Later, Gators.